Hey campers, my name is Jill McLennan. I'm a senior teaching artist at the De Young Museum. Today we're going to learn about the hornbill mask from Liberia and the hornbill bird from West Africa. Then we're going to make your own animal mask from recycled materials that you can find around your house. I'll show you three different types of animals and then you can go ahead and choose whatever animal you like for your mask. Here is a map of the huge continent of Africa. Here is West Africa, and Liberia is located just over here on the coast. A few questions to consider before we begin. How can we transform a flat piece of paper into a curved surface like your face? How can you use everyday recycled materials to create a mask with intentionality? How can we create a connection between an animal that we choose and a mask that we create? Let's look at an object from the De Young Museum collection, Hornbill Mask for the Poro Society. This mask shows an animal in mask form. This rare and impressive mask re represents a hornbill bird. It is made of wood, metal, cloth, plant fiber, and ink and worn during an initiation ceremony for boys as they prepare for adulthood. What do you notice first about this mask? What shapes and forms do you see? How did the artist emphasize the features of the hornbill bird? Hornbills are large birds with long beaks and are known for their distinctive call and human-like walk. Hornbills are monogamous. They have only one mate and the male cares for the female during their unique nesting time. The female lays her eggs inside the hollow of a tree, and she is sealed inside with mud. She and the chicks remain there for 41 days. They leave an opening in the nest just large enough for the male to pass food through to the family. The caring nature of the male hornbill birds during this nesting time is considered as a model behavior for young men in the Poro society as they are educated into adulthood. What similarities do you see between the ground hornbill bird and the mask? What features of the hornbill bird are emphasized in this mask? What animal will you choose for your mask? Do you have an animal that you connect to? Is there something that you are good at that an animal is good at too? For example, can you run really fast like a cheetah? Or are you a really good listener like a rabbit? I chose to focus on an elephant for one of my masks. I chose the elephant because elephants are large yet gentle. And this is how I feel in nature sometimes. I feel like I might be stepping on small insects and plants and I try to be aware of my footprints and take care of the earth. I'll show you a few different animals that you can make and you can go ahead and choose whichever animal you like. Now the next slide will show you some possible materials that you can use to make your mask. Go ahead and pause the video to collect your materials. Okay, let's start by making the base for your mask. So you can cut out a cereal box, just the front cover here. Then draw your oval by rounding off the edges. Cut those out. Draw three lines, one, two at the top, and one at the bottom, about two inches in, and cut those out. Now we're going to curve it to form the face. I'm going to get some tape ready.
slide one end under, one end over, pinch it, and tape. Tape it on the outside, tape it on the inside, and do the next one. Under, over, tape. Under, over, tape. And we've transformed a flat box into a curved shape. You can also make a smaller one using a smaller piece of cardboard, like that. Now let's look at some of the dominant features of our animal. Here is my African elephant. I see that some of the dominant features are the large ears and the long trunk. What are the dominant features of your animal? How can we use recycled materials to make the features of your animal stick out. What shapes and forms will help describe your animal and its strengths? Let's start with the elephant's trunk. Now, I could use something like this, a long tube for my elephant's trunk. Hmm, that's interesting. I could make it a little bit thinner by cutting a slot and kind of crunching it on. Or I could work with some other materials, like here I have the side of the cereal box. I'm going to start to fold and kind of crunch it to soften it up. That way I can make a trunk that has some curve to it, like the elephant's does. Okay, so I'll continue to curve and crunch it, soften it. And then I can, once I get the shape that I want, I can tape that on for my elephant's trunk. Also, the ears. For the ears, I thought about using an egg carton. These are really easy to tear apart. Maybe using some of these shapes like this. I could try it out. It's not quite what I want. So what about the lid of the egg carton? I could tear and shape an ear a little more freely. By looking at the shape on the drawing, I'm gonna tear this part of the egg carton to look more like an ear and less like an egg carton. So I'm just pinching my fingers like this. There. What about like that? I could even tear some of this away from the face. Once I get a shape that I like, I'm gonna go ahead and tape it on, tape it in the front and the back to make it nice and sturdy. Also tape it long ways and then tape it to secure it. There we go. Here I wanted to Soften up my material a little, little bit, make it a little bit more ear-like. Could even kind of smush it out. There we go. Here is my elephant that I worked on earlier. Two ears out of the egg cartons and the trunk out of the part of a cereal box, kind of all crunched up. Now I'll show you how an easy way to add color to your mask using tissue paper torn into strips, and glue mixed with water, and a brush. Just paint the glue right onto your mask. Try to overlap it between the feature, such as the ear and the face, so that it helps things attach. Go all the way across with the glue. Then you lay the paper down. Just press it on. You can fold it over around the edges here. Yeah. 
can get your fingers kind of sticky, so you can use the brush to press it down. And then just keep going. Add another piece. You could use all one color or you can use multi-colors like I did here in my mask of the cat. I used purple and blue and kind of mixed them together. Now you can add some adornment or decoration to your mask. Here on my rabbit mask I've added some buttons, some sequins, and some pipe cleaners. You could also use beads or ribbons or even dried beans or bottle caps that you find around your home. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about what my mask means to me. My rabbit mask hangs here in my studio. He's a quiet observer. He keeps to himself and minds his own business. He reminds me to focus in my studio. What does your mask mean to you? How has the process of mask making allowed you to connect with your animal? What new things did you learn about your animal through making the mask? What type of voice might your mask have? What type of movement might you make when you're wearing your mask? Thanks for tuning in.